Hello and welcome to Small Gold. Can China's gold save it from a debt collapse? China's debt monster threatens not only itself, but the entire global financial system. I was on the X-22 report spotlight about a week ago, and I was talking about this topic, and the question came from Dave is, is China stockpiling gold because they know what's coming to protect themselves? And I talked during that interview about the amount of gold that China had and the size of its debt. But what I want to do today is show you some charts to illustrate what I was talking about. Also, at the bottom of the blog post, I'll leave a link to that interview so you can check that out as well. Now, do the Chinese gold reserves provide adequate insurance? Well, Chinese debt to GDP is over 300%. And China's future plans rely on more debt. So we know that ratio is going to go higher. Deleveraging is not really something China can actually do without tossing the country into a severe recession and or depression. Chinese debt is so bad that according to a recent Business Insider article last month, that Chinese bankers now say it is a bubble. Let's take a look at these, the data that I've prepared for you. So China's, China's debt problem is bigger than its gold hoard. Let's start with the People's Bank of China. They list on their balance sheet 1,842 tons. We've talked about this ad nauseum. We know that that is not all the gold in China. We're going to go through the other, not where the gold might be. We've talked about that before. This, the purpose of this discussion is not to speculate where it is, but just to assume that it is in China. And it could be brought into the People's Bank of China, or we can just count it as Chinese gold. Because the People's Bank of China is where they list the official gold reserves. And then, of course, we know there's other gold in other state-owned banks, sovereign wealth funds, and so on. But the People's Bank of China lists 1,842 tons of gold. That is approximately 60 million or so ounces of gold. Well, the street value of that at the 1300 ounce is a mere 76 billion dollars so even though china has a very significant gold pile that they officially say they have it's only worth 76 billion dollars that's less than a half a month of qe it's, it's basically nothing in the world scheme of things i think bill gates is worth 80 billion dollars just to give you an idea so the people's bank of china while it may have 1,842 tons and more, we'll get into that, at current prices, that's not much gold. All right. Now, tomorrow we're going to see when I report on the People's Bank of China's gold reserves for September, we'll see a chart that shows the Hong Kong imports. And since 2001, China has imported 9,177 tons of gold. It's about 300 million ounces. Let's assume all that gold that went into China belongs to the government. Didn't go to anyone else other than state-owned banks, People's Bank of China, sovereign wealth funds. Well, that gold has a street value at the current price of about $383 billion. Nice chunk of change, but it took them 16 years to get $383 billion. Fed can print that in two months. ECB can print it in three or four months. Chinese mining, which has become the number one gold producer in the world, since 2000 has produced about 5,200 tons. That's about 167 million ounces. That's $217 billion at current street prices. Now, some people say, well, what about gold that comes in through Shanghai? Well, they don't report on that. They don't report on that for a reason. However, let's just assume that over the past, since they probably started five, six years, and this is just a guess. It could be lower. It could be higher. It could be nothing. We don't know. But let's give it 3,000 tons. That's over one year's annual gold mining production. It's a lot of gold. That's about 100 million ounces, and that's worth $125 billion. So if you add up... The 19,000, let's say 20,000 tons of gold that people would suggest. Cruz Jansen has done research. A lot of people have done research. on, And this, what I have here is just my own rudimentary numbers. But it comes out to about what a lot of people say, 20,000 tons or so 
Well, at current prices, that doesn't get you even a trillion dollars. That gets you about $800 billion. So at current prices, assuming all this gold has found its way into the government's coffers, which the people who have done their, their numbers don't give it all to the Chinese government. Let's say that it's all in the Chinese government. At current prices, it doesn't cut the mutard. It's only $803 billion. All right, well, let's move the price up. Let's triple the price. Let's get it to uh, four. Let's get it to quadruple. Let's get it to four thousand dollars an ounce. Well, that would make the People's Bank of China's gold hoard two hundred thirty-six billion a month of QE. The Hong Kong imports are pretty significant. That would be a trillion dollars. One point one Chinese mining would be about another six hundred sixty-eight billion. Shanghai imports another three hundred eighty-five. Billion. So if gold were to manage to get itself to 4,000 an ounce, you'd be at 2.4 trillion. It's a nice number, good number. I uh, remember the Fred printed $4 trillion during QE. So, and remember, that was to cover the United States issues and some foreign banks. But that was basically to save the United States. Remember, China would need to have a lot more money than $2.4 billion to save itself okay the, the fed took four trillion to save the u.s china is much bigger well all right let's get the gold price up to 10 grand now, that's a pretty big number i mean that's 10 times almost where we are today and that gets you to 592 billion at the people's bank of china again not that much but 2.95 trillion have come in through hong kong at that price not at that price but that's what it would be worth if the price was 10 grand Chinese mining be worth 1.6 trillion. Our speculative Shanghai imports would be almost a trillion. Now that would get you to six trillion dollars. It's a pretty good number. Remember, so is 10 grand an ounce. Okay. And now a lot of people are saying, well, this is going to happen. It has to happen. Okay. You know, it could happen. But here's the thing about just an aside about ten thousand dollar, fifteen thousand dollar gold. All the chatter in between isn't going to make it happen. It's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. And if it does happen, there's a lot of other issues going on in the world for gold to rise tenfold. Tenfold. Okay. Well, that gets you $6.18 trillion if gold does rise to ten grand, And then we've heard the number thirteen grand. let us use those numbers. So assuming all this gold here, all about 20,000 tons of gold or 620 million ounces, all are accounted for, all locked and loaded for the benefit of the People's Republic of China. Chinese government would have $8 trillion worth of gold. Nice piece of change, but remember, to get there, you got to have all this gold, which I don't think is that hard to get to. I think you can add this gold up and give or take a few tons, I mean a few thousand tons. I wouldn't think that there wouldn't be 20,000 tons of gold in China, okay? Now, $13,000 to get there, that's a stretch, but... If you do, it's $8.3 trillion. Well, that's not going to cut it. I'll tell you why. Here are the Chinese gold holdings today. If you take in, not the People's Bank of China, if we get you 73, I should have put that over here. If you take all the gold in China, approximately at today's price, it's $803 billion. So what? You can raise that to $4,000 an ounce. It's $2.4 trillion. To help, it's not going to solve your problems, though. It's not insurance to the extent that it's going to save the day. $10,000 worth of gold, a $10,000 an ounce of gold, kind of helps you, gets you, does help you, gets you some way there, 6.18 trillion, and at 13,000, it's 8.03 trillion. The problem is Chinese debt right now and growing is 28 trillion. All right, so you need a 13 fold increase in the price of gold and you have to ensure that all this gold belongs to China and is in the government's hands for you to even get to a quarter, less than a quarter, maybe 20% of the, uh, no, not 80, 60, yeah, it's about, uh, what is a quarter? A quarter of that would be 32 trillion, so it's not really a, a quarter, it's, it's a little more than that. It's about, um, let's see, what is that? It's about 28, 29% of the total debt, that $8 trillion. So, and that number is going to get a lot bigger 
and this for this number to get bigger not only do they have to add more gold this price has to get to 15 20 000. not sure how that happens I'm not saying it can happen but gold is never i don't think ever risen well oh it has but not not in the space of uh two or three years so you really have to because if there's going to be a debt problem in china it's going to be in the next five years well let's say it's not unprecedented you could get gold i'm, I'm not saying it can't go there i'm just showing that even if it does go there even if you do get a 13 fold increase in price you really need basically a 13 26 36 you need like a 40 fold increase to get close to covering the debt while well, this is going to be growing all the time now let's take a look at chinese treasuries they are already over 1.2 trillion so they're basically higher they have more u.s dollars than all the gold in china at the current 1300 price and if the price rises to 4,000, they've got two times as much gold as they would have. U.S. Treasuries. Here's a curious chart. This is from Nick Laird. This is the Chinese overall reserves. They had been over $4 trillion. This just shows you how easily a country can blow through a trillion dollars. In less than a year, they went down a trillion dollars. They went from $4 trillion to $3 trillion. Now they're at about $3.109 trillion. So, you know, if you have $2 trillion worth of gold and you have a debt crisis, this wasn't even during a crisis. This is just China protecting uh, the yuan, you know, selling, selling assets. That's all that is, selling U.S. dollars, selling treasuries. All right, now, just another aside. China, according to today, came out, uh, Commerce Minister says China has $6 trillion worth of assets. Now, that, I don't, they don't say what they are, but they're not gold. They're stuff. They could be gold mines, they could be properties, they could be industries that they own overseas. But again, when you have a crisis, you can't just sell those assets and uh, raise the capital. So here is the coming up. What we have is China's attempt to internationalize the yuan. That'll be this weekend. And tomorrow we're going to do the People's Bank of China September Gold Reserves update. There is the link for my interview on the x22 report and for further reading go to smallgold.com and read the chinese holdings of u.s treasury saw we just saw that uh why china's credit rating was recently downgraded we're going to talk about well we're not going to talk about you can read about the gold back yuan nonsense story now if you could see the gold back yuan that while china wants to internationalize the yuan they're going to do it gradually they're not just going to introduce gold into the system because they got enough problems right now. They have to make sure that this debt bubble doesn't burst. They're navigating through central planning. They don't need the shock and jolt to the system that trying to introduce a gold back yuan would do and the, and the attendant changes it would have on the currency, the potential trade wars they might get into as a result of it. China doesn't need that aggravation, doesn't need that drama. Uh, cashless in China conspiracies, case of China's missing gold. That was an article published in Zero Edge about three years ago when China first reported its official gold reserves for the first time in six years. Got Shanghai Gold Exchange withdrawals, of weekly monthly archives, and then the monthly Chinese gold reserves. Uh, you can check that out as well. They're, they're there for like the last three or four years. I've been covering gold and silver for about four years now so there's an extensive archive of information you can see at the top here of monthly and lots of reporting on gold and silver if you like this channel please like the uh the video you're watching whether it's on BitChute, on vidme or youtube make sure you subscribe to it and also subscribe to smallgold.com if you really like the channel please consider donating a small or very large amount to small gold, become a small gold patron, donate via PayPal, donate via Bitcoin, via Litecoin, and all of the links below the videos and on the small gold uh, blog post. And also, if you want to buy gold or silver or cryptocurrencies, there are offers on the site and at the links below that can help you do that. You pay no more nor less than if you visit those sites directly, and small gold gets a small commission. You can compare pricing and shipping on 
gold and silver at BGSC, SD Bullion, Money Metals Exchange, and Golden Eagle Coins. And not investment advice to buy that, but if you do, Smuggle gets a small commission. And also through Coinbase, you can buy $100 worth of Bitcoin. If you sign up, you will get $10 worth of free Bitcoin, and Small Gold will get the same. So thank you very much for watching this smallgold.com video.